I guess we graduated a August 4th, 2022. And uh, I started pre-OCS the next, the next drill. When did you get back, Chad? Let me see. I got you back, back December, December 2020. I got back December. Got back right around, like I said, December so Edgar, second or third. Yeah. I had like what three drills, and then you September, October, up. November, December. You showed up in January. January. Okay, yeah. right. I showed up in January. Yeah. So that was that was that was long, um, but I I eventually determined that traditional would be the best course of action for Marie and I. Um, I wanted to go to accelerated. But yes, you did. I remember having uh, this conversation with you. Like I wanted to go to accelerated over a year ago, right? You know. <laughs> um, ah. and then you know i was like well maybe i'll go to summer and, and it just ended it up being that that you know i uh, need to be grateful that i'm in after trying for so long and there needs to be compromises with my uh you know my my, my i try and use the terminology my sort of my my other joint force commander you know um we are peers and we need to agree on the course of action and, you know, honestly, like uh, she already did uh, a tremendous thing at the age of 25 or 35 with four children, even mm -hmm. saying yes. Yeah. Right. Um, if it had come out of the blue and I'd just been like at 35 and like, I want to join the army, she would have been like, absolutely <laughs> not. What what are is, you stupid? <laughs> you are borderline insane. Um, but because I had been trying ever since even before we were even yeah. dating, um, she knew it was something that was very, uh, important. Very, very important to me. Um, I would imagine a scene from Misery where she's breaking. <laughs> she, was, she was like, you work from home doing IT. You ain't going to need those knees. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and so then, you know, we determined that traditional would be the right course of action, which was, which was more difficult than I thought, finally telling the cadre that I was going to do traditional. Um, and then, oh, Captain uh, Stosher trying to like, what are you doing, Edgar? Oh yeah, yeah, Lieutenant Stosher, yeah, Lieutenant Stosher did not want me to do tr traditional. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also I wanted to do infantry for the longest time. I still do. Um, but I also agree with Marine that I would do a Bullock that was uh, within home. driving distance of home. And fortunately, we have three Bullocks that are in driving distance, mm -hmm. at least three. But three three combat arms are within driving distance. So. Mm -hmm. FA and ADA are down at Fort Sill, and then combat en engineers are up in um, Fort Leonard Wood in M Missouri. So all three of those are easily drivable for a weekend mm -hmm. coming home, and that would lessen the impact on her and the boys uh, for me being gone. And Absolutely. would still allow me to do combat arms, so um, hoping for field artillery. Very cool. I, I don't see why you wouldn't get it, considering how uh, desperate we are for officers at the moment. So I think you're good. And I think you made the right decision in doing yeah. traditional, too. I mean, I'm glad you're in our class with us because let's just say uh, you're able to communicate more effectively with, with some of us with some of us in the, the group than others are. But uh, we appreciate you being in here. So, I don't know about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, so how... Have you enjoyed pre OCS? Are you were you just have you just been ready to be done from the minute you started, or have you actually gotten some actual learning experience when you were in the pre OCS? Program? Pre OCS was definitely instructional, uh, or was definitely instructive. Um, the land navigation was tremendous. Um, you know, getting those reps in, uh, you know, it really allowed me to honestly breeze through the land nav at phase one. Mm -hmm. I mean, no factor whatsoever. Um, you know. I was, I was the first one done, you know, that morning out of us, 90 of us candidates. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, that, you know, that was really helpful. Um, but no, I was a little impatient. I was like, okay, it's September mm -hmm. phase one doesn't start until July. Yeah. Okay. I, I think they you did know, a very good a job year free OCS almost yeah. a year, almost a, yeah. For you, for sure. I, I remember coming in and like I said, even the minimal, land nav stuff that i got like it was super effective because you know i just had that like one day of land nav you do at the uh, phase two right or, or well, what was basic it called? training basic, basic, basic training yeah. when you're at uh i guess it's after the six mile you know, is it the is it the oh, seven mile basic training is land navigation yeah. that's what it yeah i mean that's it's a good introduction but yeah it's but very yeah, very it, simple oh yeah and and my group that i was with we didn't find a single one because i was gone doing i was i had details every time they taught a land nav course oh, we got five out of five so i i didn't get to do anything so when i got paired up with the group i was like i better be in a group of people who know what they're doing 
because I had a working knowledge because I'd seen YouTube videos and stuff how to do land nav. But sure. when I went there, you know, you're just sitting there. It's like when you start, you're just like, I forgot everything. I we just got done walking six mi- or seven miles. Like I don't know what I'm doing right now. So yeah, my the group that I was paired with, like they're like, I know it. Actually, the one point that I I said I'm gonna dead wreck us to this point. I said I got us there, and that was the only one we got right. And then. I was like, I'll let you guys take it from here since you guys say you know what you're doing. And they're like, cool. So I was like, we didn't find any more after that. And I was like, I should have just stayed in charge. But, Golly. but you know, when you have that coming back and I, I do the one land nav course, I was just like, I, 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 you know, I looked at Sergeant Hoosier and I was like, I haven't done any land nav. I did it one time at basic and, uh, you know, this is going to be rough. And he was like, ah, you'll do fine. And then yeah. he was right. I did. I, I did pretty good. And you got so much practice in phase one. I mean, we went out there for days practicing. Yes. I mean, like days. Yeah. Phase one did great. And, you know, and, Going moving on to phase one, how what was your assessment of phase one? Like, how was it compared to other OCS programs you've been in? I mean, I was only basically at reception for Navy OCS. I was three days before they told me I was going, so that I I know nothing about Navy OCS, mm-hmm. nothing at all. I, um, um, I mean, I remember we had a room actually. The, you know, you had a room and a roommate. Whereas with Marine Corps OCS, it was 76 people in a single bay. Like it was, you know, Camp Gruber style barracks, which was fine, whatever, with no air conditioning in the summer in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was old brick buildings, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it's hard for me to remember too much about uh, Marine Corps OCS. It was 2007 now. Um, I do remember Land Nav. I was first in Land Nav there too. Okay. Um, so that was, you know, I, I like land navigation. Um, I honestly found the, from what I can remember, I was pleasantly surprised to find out how rational the army was, Mm -hmm. that there was reasons for everything we did and the reasons were intelligible. They weren't unintelligible, you know? Um, I think that was the most surprising thing about it. I thought that the, the drill sergeants and platoon trainers, the tacks, they were all reasonable human beings and who would explain things and who would act like human beings. Cause Marine Corps drill instructors, they don't act like human beings, not they're, until the very end. Yeah, they're like they characters. do not break character. Like they are solid drill sergeants without breaking for 10 weeks until the very end. And, um, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but you know, the army, I really enjoyed that they were actually humans and they would explain things to you, um, mm-hmm. within reason. Um, yeah, I, I think that was probably my assessment of phase one. It was mostly what I expected mm-hmm. and I was pleasantly surprised of how reasonable it was. Good deal. Was, uh, so you weren't, uh, you weren't surprised or by anything or was anything particularly difficult or just something that sucked or stood out in the moment or in phase one? Yeah. Again, the most difficult thing is being away from Marie and the boys, mm-hmm. like by far. I mean, there's inconveniences, there's stressing, like all this stuff. And even our drill weekends, like the drill weekends, like our drill weekends of by far, it's only two days, but still mm-hmm. by far the most difficult thing is being away from family. Yeah. So I know deployments are going to be, and deployments that first month is going to be rough. Yeah. On, uh, on our first deployment, like that's going to be rough, really rough. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. I seem to I seem to be getting a, a hang of, of most of the things um, fairly well, and while I'm not the strongest or the fastest, you know, I pass all my tests and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it's like, that's true. You know, I think I've got my highest was a five twenty one or something like that on the ACFT. So, you know, yeah, it's good. Good, good deal. Good deal. Um, how about phase two? How, how, what are your opinions on phase two? How have you? Uh... How do you feel about that? Um, phase two is probably the only time I've ever we've encountered something irrational so far with the army, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, that history test, like, why do they do that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Take a whole semester's worth of coursework and try and teach it to you in one weekend and then test you. I mean, thank goodness. Again, Captain Taylor was a reasonable human being. He was a normal person, and he was like, "This is dumb. Yeah. Here's a study guide. Yeah. Like, this will give you the answer. Not give you the answers. That's not." He did not give us the answers, but he's like, this is a study guide that will allow you to pass this test when they give you a ridiculously stupid amount of time to te- to study for mm-hmm. it and then give it to you the test. Um, uh, other than that, phase two has been, again, mostly what I expect. Uh, too many old MREs at the very beginning before we got like a new yeah. uh, budget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All three of us getting oh. those horrible 
gosh dehydration headaches headaches oh my gosh those headaches after eating those old mres yeah um no it's been mostly what i've expected as well you know classwork and less far less far fewer inspections than i thought we were going to get we get like almost no inspections compared to what i was expecting yeah um boy we 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 got like they drilled that in like chamberlain drilled that in phase one is like these rooms better look perfect they better look identical yeah. and then we haven't had a room inspection since that, that first, first that day first that first yeah, and, drill weekend and you and me were putting leadership on ceremonies and we were just getting our crap pushed in. well see the, the great thing about that i didn't care about that too much because i knew that wasn't graded mm-hmm. i knew july was a free one mm-hmm. For, uh, july was was the flag had been thrown this was a free play mm-hmm. i knew it right and so that was great, you know, so, um, but it was the toughest one. I mean, like he put us through the ringer that with that drill. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> crawling around was, outside. Oh man. Like, wait, like you're going to crawl across the tarmac and go up that hill. I was like, what is happening right now? Yeah. Or my answer is like, how long do you need to get these, these rooms ready? And I, I was like, like, I was like, honest, I was like five minutes. This, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was honestly for I was like thinking to myself his standards like what we're trying to do right now like this is our first weekend I was like two hours and he was like oh heck no you you hear that you 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 want to keep your candidates up another two hours and I was like well that's not what you asked me you asked you know but I didn't say it to him you asked me how much time you I would need candidate? yeah you asked me how much time you I would need to get these rooms in order and I it's a, um but yeah it's it it good so the, yeah phase two again mostly reasonable. Mostly what I expected, um, except fewer inspections than I think, and uh, uh, that history exam, silly. Yeah, very, silly. very silly. But I enjoyed the history exam. But I, I, but I like I'm a history. The topic buff. was fantastic. I love history. So the, the topic was fantastic, but the amount of information and the way the questions yeah. were done, and you were supposed to learn that in in about thirty six hours. What did you say? What did the Captain McGuire say? That's two semesters of. Is it two semesters? Okay. It's, either two, it's either a semester or two semesters of yeah. of collegiate history crammed into, for us, two yeah. days, but for yeah. them, we accelerated, what, like two weeks or something like that? Which I don't understand that either because it's like shouldn't we, we should roughly have the same amount of hours of POI. So why did they get it over the course of three two weeks and we got it in two days? Well, I think it's because they expect us to study outside of the, the allotted time frame because of the nature of the program that we're in. It is what you know. It's like, that's why Captain Taylor sent us that study guide. So, but if but official POI though, no, no, I'm not is, saying I disagree with you. Right, I did, like there's no study guide. There's no official expectation that we're supposed to be studying mm-hmm. ahead of time. Like they introduce the topic on Saturday morning, you take that test on Sunday afternoon. Yep. And it's like that's crazy. That's mm-hmm. crazy. So I don't disagree with you. So with that being said, we're kind of at the close of this little interview. What advice would you give to future incoming officer candidates uh, coming into this program for like, you know, class seven zero or just general life advice? Uh, Dad advice, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Um, pay attention. Uh, read a lot of books. Ask people that you trust and admire what books they read. Um, find a good spouse early. Like as early as you can reasonably do, find a good spouse and marry them. Um, that will provide you such an incredible foundation and framework for your life. And whatever you're doing, try and get better at it. Um, at first I didn't want to do it from what I say is like it is like, well, I didn't necessarily want to do it, but there is a pleasure or a satisfaction in doing something well, even if you didn't necessarily want to do it in the first mm-hmm. place, you know? Um, and so I think that those are good. So yeah, pay attention, read a ton, read all the time that you can, um, you know, you know, like watch less, watch, watch less television, put away the video games, read, um, uh, do well in your job and get married early to a good woman who's going to help you with, you know, you're going to help each other out in life. I think that's good advice. Best advice I can hear. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I guess I should say, sorry, those are more intermediate goals. I think then the foundational goal, which everything else is based off of is no love and serve God. So you can be happy with him in this life and in the next. 
Yes, so sir. that's foundational. Everything else should be based off of that. I like that. That's that's a good way to end it. <laughs>